All right, we're back. Episode three. As promised, here we go, guys. I'm going to attempt to um, start tearing down the interior here. Got a little bit of a break. Shouldn't be that hard. Um, seats are manual, not a whole lot of electronics. So here we go. Welcome to the channel. We are Rats and Racing. My team and I have been racing at 24 hours of lemons for over 10 years. We've had our ups and we've had our downs. Way down. Failure is always an option. Enjoy the insanity. Not now. Nice car. What's the retail on one of those? What do they want? They want a race. Smoke. You're exceeding the speed limit. We're gonna save these guys! Slow down! So it dawned on me during the last video that many of you watching this may not even be aware of the 24 Hours of Lemons here in the States. Um, 24 Hours of Lemons is an endurance race for $500 cars. That's the Cliff Notes version, right? If you really want to know what it's all about, I highly recommend watching the video in the link below from Donut Media. They did a phenomenal job of capturing what it really means to be at a lemons race and part of a lemons team. There's a big part of creativity that goes into these cars, a lot of blood, sweat, tears, time, effort, you name it. Um, but in the end, every car is unique, every car is different, every car has that story. Um, so if you're not familiar with the 24 Hours of Lemons, um, maybe you're curious about getting into the sport, um, stay tuned, we're gonna, we're gonna give you some, uh, some pointers. One of the things I'd like to do during this breakdown is I'm going to go over the rules of lemons and give you guys some guidance on Maybe you're looking to join a lemons team. Maybe you're looking to build your own car. Maybe you're looking to get into lemons and just don't know where to begin. So as we break this car down, what I want to do is make sure we incorporate a lot of that into these videos. So you understand that if you want to get into lemons, there's a really easy way to do it. And then if you want to jump in with both feet and build your own car and go at it, we'll talk about that too. All right, there are really three ways to get into the 24 hours of lemons. Um, step one, if it's just you, find a team. There are a ton of teams that need drivers all over the country. Get on the 24 Hours of Lemons website, look at your regional races, and find a team that needs drivers. Uh, this is a great way to get your feet wet. Candidly, Lemons is the most cost-effective way to get some really quality track time. Um, and there's a ton of teams out there. There's a ton of Lemons cars out there. I would highly recommend anyone looking to get into 24 Hours of Lemons Again, get on the forums, find a local team that needs a driver, and offer to help out. People have a connection to the cars that they're building. So if you are joining a new Lemons team, keep that in mind. Have an open mind, have a great attitude, be willing to jump in and help, whether it be time, money, resources, whatever. These races aren't cheap. There's a lot of people spending money to, to attend these races. They're bringing their families. It's a great way to meet new people. Uh, the Lemons community are going to be some of the best people you've ever meet. That being said, many of you are familiar with the Ratson. Uh, we've been running this car for 10 years. Um, when I first built this car, um, it wasn't even finished. First race we attended back in 2012, um, the car wasn't even running. Um, and I had people at the 24 Hours of Lemons race that day, MSR Houston, people I had never met in my life, jumped in to help me finish this car because they wanted to see it on track. Um, that's the type of community you're going to find here at Lemons. Um, I highly recommend uh, you take that into consideration when joining a new team, especially as an outsider. A lot of people put a lot of time, money, effort, blood, sweat, tears, you name it, into getting these cars out on track. So if you become a new team member, keep that in mind. Have a great attitude. Don't be a dick. Offer to jump in, whether it be with time, 
money, parts, resources, you name it. That's the best way, The I should say the easiest way to get into lemons. Um, and then stair step it from there. If you wanna build your own car, great. Step two, you got a group of guys, wanna get into lemons, best way, find a car that's already for sale. All right, so let's say you and your buddies got together over the weekend, maybe one too many adult beverages, and you decide, you know what, that 24 hours of lemons thing, we can do that. All right, so some advice. If you wanna get into the 24 hours of lemons, here's another idea. Find a car that's already for sale. There's a ton of lemons teams out there, there's a ton of lemons cars out there, and if you check the Lemons website on the classifieds, there are a bunch of Lemons cars, turnkey, ready to go. That's the second best way to get into Lemons. Find a team that's retired or given up or whatever, and their car's for sale. Trust me, there's a ton of cars all over the country. That way you're not having to invest in a roll cage or in safety gear. Someone else has already done the hard work, so you and your guys could quickly jump into a car that's turnkey, ready to go, and go racing. That's my advice uh, if you've got a group of guys that ready to go. All right, so step three, you and your guys want to build a car, soup to nuts. Well, find a complete car. Don't make the mistake that a lot of us make by trying to reverse engineer a car from the ground up. My first car, the Ratson, I made that mistake. Bought a 78 Datsun that had been sitting for 18 years and decided I was going to put a modern drivetrain and suspension in it in about three months. Well, that didn't happen. So my advice, if you and your guys want to build a car from scratch, find a complete car. Um, there are a ton of $500 cars out there to be had. Um, keep in mind that all of your safety gear is going to be budget exempt. Lemons take safety very seriously. So like your roll cage, your steering wheel, your brakes, your wheels and tires, your seats, your belts, all this is considered safety gear and it's gonna be budget exempt. Don't cheap out on these items. This is a racing event. Uh, accidents do happen. People have gotten hurt. So take your time, invest money in your safety gear. Don't cheap out, put in a good roll cage, find a good welder, find a good fab shop locally if you decide to build your own car and do it right. Follow the rules. Speaking of the rules, whether you're looking to get into the sport by yourself, with a group of friends, whatever, here are some great documents I highly recommend you download from the 24 Hours of Lemons website. Uh, if you're building a car, this is the Bible. Uh, how not to fail lemons tech. Through this document, they're gonna go through roll cage design, the do's and the don'ts, everything you need to know when you're putting a cage in a car. Follow this document. Um, at just about every race I've been to, people have failed tech because they do not follow the rules. At every race, you're gonna have to fill out a tech sheet. And we'll go through this tech sheet in depth in a later episode, uh, but it's, it's not rocket science. This is basic stuff to keep you safe, make sure the car isn't going to implode and take out innocent bystanders. Um, so you're gonna have to fill out one of these at every race. Um, I also highly recommend that you all get familiar with the Lemons rules. Um, we'll be going through some of these as we go through this build. Um, some of the, the basic stuff that you need to look out for when constructing the car, safety gear, again, how not to fail tech. Um, it's real simple. They put it all in black and white for you, no pun intended, but it's all here. And if you follow the rules, you should pass tech, no problems. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So the plan today is basically we are going to continue to break down the interior, get everything ripped out of there. Um, if I've got time, I'd like to get it up on the air, get the suspension spacers. I think in the last video I kept calling them wheel spacers, but it's actually a suspension spacer that's on this thing that lifts it about an inch. So pull that out. And I've actually got a set of um, original Miata wheels and tires that came with the car that I'd like to put those back on so we can see how this thing is going to sit on the ground. But again, first things first, got um, the trunk all cleaned out, pulled the liner out, went ahead and charged the battery. Um, it is holding 12 volts, but I don't know if you guys can see this or not. This battery is from 2017. 
Um, so wish me luck here. So we're gonna climb in here and I'm gonna fire this thing up for you guys as promised. So trusty old keychain. <sighs> Moment of greatness, don't let me down. Let's see how this goes. Well, that's a good sign, right? Okay. All right, take two. Okay, fire right up. Uh, looks like I got it wrong. Looking at about 180,000 miles. Brake lights on, check engine lights not on though. Uh, but again, complete car, dash looks good. Let this thing warm up for a minute. It is a five speed, it has power windows. We'll go ahead and continue to tear this thing down. I'll hop out and let you guys see the motor here. Really good. All right, quick rundown again. I've already tackled the trunk, got it all cleaned out, got the battery charged up, went ahead and fired it up for you guys. Here's the interior. Um, pretty dirty. I'm not going to worry about cleaning it because we're going to wind up scrapping most of this anyway. But we'll go ahead and uh, get the cameras rolling. I don't want to bore you guys too much, so we'll do a time lapse of me tearing down the interior here, getting the seats out, carpets out as much as I can get out over the next few hours. Uh, see what it'll take to get this top off. Um, I might have to consult the internet for that one. Um, and just, yeah, continue to go through this thing, break it down. What? What the hell is this? Scott, what did you leave in this car for me, dude? Really? America. That <laughs> looks like a cycling jersey. Uh, if anybody needs a uh, American flag cycling jersey, uh, <laughs> hit me up. Man, get the big gun out of here. All right, hold, please. Much better. So, rule of thumb, something I've learned over the years. Put these back so you don't lose them. They're not going to be in the way and you will save yourself time and aggravation. See, look at that. I've already lost two of them. Better be in the seat. Nope. Well, shit. All right, where did they go? Oh, they're right here. See, put them somewhere and I already forgot. This carpet is disgusting. That was easy. Alright. I think it's time to go into full savage mode. Stand by. Whoops. Slow down. More money. Is that a handle? What the hell is that? There we go. Just needs some persuasion.
I apologize now if someone wanted a Miata carpet because I'm gonna go medieval on this thing without slashing myself in the process so, or hopefully any wires that were just underneath there like that Like it was cut. Any ideas from the Miata brethren of the world? Why is there a little button right there? Huh. That took longer than it should have. Is that factory? Is this factory? These strips holding on this motor right here? That can't be factory. <sighs> okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Yep. That other door was worked on because look at this door right here. It's still got all the plastic on it. You see this? All this is still intact. So, somebody's monkeyed with that door over there. Alright, here we go. Let's see if I can get some light in here. Put those in the corner right there. Let's go to the other side. Don't do that. Here. That's a failure to communicate. <laughs> All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. For those of you that just watched that calamity, I I apologize. I really wanted to get the top out in one piece, which I did, but I heard a couple of tears when we did it. So if you were looking for a brown convertible top with a glass window, I've got one slightly damaged, pooped on, Make you a hell of a deal if you're interested. Sorry, guys. Okay, you guys see this soundproofing stuff here? You can see it on the firewall real well as well. This is in a majority of the newer modern cars. Uh, it's a spray-on rubber coating. Um, best way to remove this, and we're going to show you guys when once we start putting the roll cage in here, um, dry ice. Get yourself some dry ice. You can either just put dry ice directly on this and it'll freeze it and it'll cause it to pop up in one big chunk. Don't try using a wire wheel or a, you know, a chisel. It'll take you forever. Um, we actually take dry ice. We crunch it up. We mix it with some isopropyl alcohol. Put down the slurry. Pack it in there real good. Leave it for a couple of minutes. And you'll actually hear this entire sheet of rubber here just pop off. And then you just pull it off and you're good to go. Uh, same thing in there. We'll put it along the edge of that piece and get as much of this rubber coating out of here as we can. Um, there's a little dynamite here under the seat, but there's some rubber under here. You can kind of see it right there. Um, we'll take care of that as well. Turn this light off. Well, that was a giant pain in the ass. <sighs> Again, I don't know much about Miata, so I'll take this last bit of carpet out, but for the most part, got 
most of the carpet, seats, door cards, everything else out. Trunk is cleaned out as well. Uh, we'll take care of the soundproofing. Everything else is looking good. We'll keep moving forward. Get these little bits of carpet out. I'll hold on to all these. Go back here. It's kind of weird. I guess the top secures back there on all these. And when I pulled it out, I ripped it. Uh, I look forward to your hate mail in the comments below. But sorry, we weren't going to run that top anyway, because we're going to run that top. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Until the next time.